Good morning, everyone. We're continuing with our How to Work with People discussion based on Swami's book, The Art of Supportive Leadership. And we're still on the subject of intuition, which is what this whole chapter is about. And it's a very important topic, so we'll just keep going with it. But first, let's offer a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Master, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Dear friend Swami Kriyananda, Humbly we bow to you all. Help us to understand your inner guidance, to feel your living presence in our hearts and minds, to see the light of your guidance everywhere we look, so that we may walk with confidence and courage toward the eternal bliss, which is our true home. Om. Peace. Amen. This chapter of Swami's, we haven't gotten to the common sense part, but it's a really a good one. Leadership is intuition guided by common sense. So we're still on the intuition part because there's so much of it. So let's see what he says next. Or he was the, the paragraph before, just to orient you, even if you feel strongly impelled from within to a certain course of action, it is better to speak of this impulse to others only rarely. Instead, offer them sound reasons. It also, <clears throat> among other reasons why it's not good to always talk about how you're intuitively guided, is that it tends to, the, the temptation for the ego to become involved in that reality is very great. And it's better not to put oneself in a position where you're doing something where the ego could attach itself to it in the wrong way. Not only you might feel somewhat detached from it, but other people will then start projecting upon you all kinds of ideas and images based on the fact that, ooh, you're so intuitive. And uh, to imagine oneself to be immune to these influences um, too often turns out to be presumption. So it's just a very, it's a very good thing to respect the possibility of delusion. Now, the, the other reasons were all the reasons we've been talking about, about what it does to your subordinates, but also think about what it does to you. And also, once you announce that, that I you know, I act from intuition, then you always have to act from intuition. And if you don't have any intuition, the temptation to make it up also starts coming in. So just respect the powers of delusion. Or, Swami goes on to say, perhaps better still, offer them a chance to respond from intuition themselves. State your case to them simply, without frills, and invite their response. Um, Swami doesn't really go into in any great greater length about how your co-workers can develop intuition. He's not really, this is not really a course in training others in the intuitive process. But he's, what, he's a lot, what he's suggesting, though, is that you respect the fact that other people may also have um, guidance from a higher level. And if you, if you cut off discussion and place yourself as separate from them as the only one who has valid guidance, then there's no hope of them developing it, at least no hope of your being a useful um, ally in their developing intuition. But again, how sensibly and impersonally you relate to your own intuition also sets the example of how other people should relate to theirs. And when, if you as the leader are always claiming your intuition and regardless of everything it has to be followed, then your subordinates will think, well, that's how intuition will work. And then they themselves will start claiming intuition and telling you that it has to be done this way. And you'll, you'll just be creating a completely unnecessary mess. 
because if the intuitions are really valid, they can be supported for the most part by common sense and they will prove themselves and everybody will develop a more sensible and impersonal relationship to this flow of energy. There is a certain power that accompanies truly intuitive feeling that often carries the day, even if one, ha even if one hasn't labeled that feeling intuition. So this is here where truth, truth has its own power. If what you're suggesting is a really good idea, it doesn't matter where it came from. And once again, this is also to avoid my claiming that I have access. It doesn't matter where it, claim, where it came from. What matters is that it's a good idea. And if it is, others will see it. People will be the more inclined to accept what you say if you offer I, your ideas to them in such a way that they too can respond on this level, on this higher level. Thus, you will encourage them to develop their own intuitive powers. You know, for intuition can be developed, not by all perhaps, but by many people with practice. This is another thing that you realize. It's, we're always... Thoughts are, not un, thoughts are not individual, they're universal. We don't create thoughts by the power of our own egoic perception. We receive them from the flow of cosmic energy and we receive um, inspiration and ideas on the level that we're tuned into. So if we're constantly um, trying to tune into a higher vibration, and of course that can come explicitly from prayer. Every time I start a session, I always name the gurus bow humbly to the gurus, ask their um, blessing and guidance on what we're doing. But if you're in a context where that is not possible, you can always do it silently. Bear that in mind. You don't have to be able to recite a public prayer to say an inward prayer. A friend of mine who was a very successful businessman was very devoted to Jesus. And in his office, he had a chair that he never offered to guests. It was never used by anyone else. It was in the office, but not in a very convenient place for, the, for holding meetings and so on. But in his own inner understanding, that was the chair where Jesus always sat. And so from his point of view, Jesus was in every meeting that he had. He never told anybody about it. He told me, because I'm not a business colleague, but I was a spiritual friend. And he was a very intuitive man and became quite successful because he had an intuition for where his industry was heading and he always managed to be out there a little ahead of it. And he felt it was because Jesus was constantly inspiring him. So it can be, intuition can be developed if we ourselves tune in to a higher vibration. Now, if you're working with subordinates or in a context where you can't do anything explicit, you can still appeal to higher principles. You know, what are we trying to accomplish with the work that we're doing? Not merely that we're trying to make money for the stockholders, but like, who are we serving? What are the needs of the people that we're serving? How can we serve those needs better? How can we add to what we're doing um, elements, magnetic elements, that may not be just about dollars and cents, but will will show our our, our clientele, you know, that we have their best interests at heart. In other words, keep the conversation elevated and then people's um, thoughts will turn to how to um, expand and be creative in the direction that is, uh, that is the highest octave that they can reach. Even how can we, you know, help each other? How can we work together well? Um, how can just everything that you can think of that's upward moving instead of selfishly pulling and that will then start attuning people's minds to a higher level of inspiration and so the ideas that will come to them will be more inclined to be super conscious rather than subconscious or merely moving the parts around without really accomplishing anything um, having uh, a calm uplifted atmosphere having focused, um, quiet conversations in which 
people listen respectfully to each other, um, having a, an atmosphere that as much as is possible in the context of what the work you're doing, that is in itself uplifted, um, that has a high vibration. You know, what does your office space look like? What does your meeting space look like? Um, I, I know people set up meeting spaces that are designed to elevate some people and denigrate other people and make certain ones seem important and certain ones not seem important. You know, just look at your workspace. Are you helping people to feel um, uplifted and empowered? Or have you set up an atmosphere in which they don't? Um, can we, you know, do we have quiet, t quiet time to think during our meetings? Or do we have, you know, noisy soundtracks going on all the time? Phones ringing, people walking in and out? Think about all these things and you can really gradually shift the whole atmosphere of what you're doing. Okay. <clears throat> For intuition can be developed, not by all perhaps, but by many people, with practice. There is a certain feeling that comes when true intuition is at work, as opposed to the mere enthusiasms of imagination. And I've talked about this over the last few days, about that certain feeling and how you begin to be able to discern the superconscious guidance from the lesser guidance by experience and by the results, by how does it turn out, how does it feel to you over time, you know, what, what happens to your own consciousness when you follow or don't follow, all of these different things. And that also requires, you know, enough sensitivity and respect and enough... Um, well, stillness is the word I want to use, which is not a word people generally associate with a business atmosphere, but a kind of inner stillness and a, a referring everything we're doing to a higher, a higher reality than just our own mind. Experience will enable one gradually to recognize the difference between intuition and imagination. Imagination is the is the opposite of intuition here. This is where um, we get very confused. Because imagination can also be exceedingly vivid. And as I, and viv and also, imagination can also be exceedingly pleasant <laughs> because when we're creating it ourselves, uh, we can often add to it whatever vibrations we want. So we just, I, it, 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 there's no, um, well, as I've said to you, I've, I've, I've given classes on this subject. Actually, intuition is really tricky. I'll just tell you my own experience with this. I started teaching uh, the class that we called How to Know and Trust Your Inner Guidance, which is a title that we've literally used for decades because it's a good title and it's a good program. But decades ago when I was teaching it, I found it very hard to communicate well and have people really understand. Uh, for years I followed Swami. Swami Kriyananda himself gave a class and it might have been that same title. It was sort of the seminal class on that subject and I had extensive notes from his class and I modeled mine exactly on what he said because I did not and I still don't to a very large extent know how to really teach people about this subject. And as a consequence I became very disheartened about um, this, this class. And I remember one class in particular in which I did my very best to communicate everything that Swami had to say on the subject that I was able to understand. And at the end of it, um, one person in the class made it perfectly clear to me that not only had they not understood a word I'd said, they'd actually taken what I'd said and made the opposite from it. And I felt quite... Uh, rebellious at that point. And I was talking to Swamiji on the phone not long after and I told him that I wasn't, I just simply refused to teach the subject of inner guidance. It's just too easily misunderstood because imagination takes over. Oh yes, I felt that. I, you know, I dreamt about Jesus. I saw his face. It's not that you're not seeing it, but it's not always, it's not always as 
clear cut of power as you think it is. So there we are. You see, I'm stuck. So I said to Swami, I resign. I'm not going to teach this class anymore. Intuition is just too hard. Swami's response was, Asha, you have to. You have to teach it. He said, because it's the most important thing on the spiritual path. And he said, yes, people will misunderstand, but how else will they learn unless they try and make mistakes? People must be encouraged to try. So we have to have a... One of, one of Swami's principles about how to develop intuition is you have to have a very healthy regard for the very real possibility that you are wrong. What happens is when people have an intuitive feeling, they sort of feel like they have to just jump on the bandwagon and insist that it's true. Whereas actually just the opposite is true. You can be very perhaps about it. This is the feeling I've had, perhaps, is what we ought to do. Because that gives, that, that avoids the fact, which I've talked about earlier, of where your ego grabs it and makes, makes that which is supposed to be beyond ego into an egotistical experience. Because it's intuition, it's intuition, it's my intuition. Well, it might be just like the faintest stirring of intuition, just the faintest beginning of attunement. And then imagination can rush in and add a whole lot of other features to it. So Swamiji was always very humble. I told in yesterday or the day before, I was talking about how Swami would have a very strong feeling about something, but he would still ask us for our opinion. And he was genuinely asking our opinion. He wasn't just uh, doing what he thought he ought to do to look good, to make it seem like we were involved, because he was, he was humble about himself. You know, he had great reason to have faith in his intuition, but one of the reasons he could have faith in it is because he was so humble about it. So there he was. He, really, he, would, he would really listen. I've, I've sat in on some of the sessions I referred to in many sessions with him where he was as wide open as if he had no idea what the result would be. And so he was listening to us with full attention. And he was listening to hear the voice of intuitive guidance coming from someone else's lips. We have this strange idea that in regard to something that concerns me, I'm the only one who can get intuition. But often I am the worst one to get intuition for myself. And Swami often said that. He said it's, it's very difficult. Now, I'm talking about personal Like, what should I personally do, not what should we do with the project. But if there's any element of of involvement of self, be very, very respectful of delusion. It has a lot of power, and it can slip in there. And so uh, these are all things that are important to keep in mind. Um, Let's see. Experience will enable one gradually to recognize the difference between intuition and imagination. So don't be afraid to go forward and then fail. And if you're humble in going forward, the failure will just be, huh, that was a good learning experience. If you've staked yourself out and your entire well-being and everybody's opinion of you depends on your being right, you're just dooming yourself to delusion because it'll be so hard to break through that. Occasionally, on the strength of such experience, one will be able successfully to take even major risks. History is full of examples of leaders who did so and won outstanding victories. That comes slowly. Um, it's always better when you're, until you have real reason to really trust yourself and not just the affirmation, um, to take it a step at a time among Swami's instructions for um, how to develop intuition, is take it a step at a time. Don't feel that, well, I'm supposed to move. I'm, you know, I'm going to sell my house in the morning and buy a house in a city I've never seen. You know, take a trip. Go to the next place. See what the options are. Just take it a step at a time. And again, I'm going to go back to this. True intuition has real power. And we don't have to be afraid of tiny errors. If it's really meant to be, 
it will come back to us. It always does. Again, if what one feels in the given situation is valid, others will be able to tune into it and sense its validity too. So this also depends on how we communicate. And people are better and worse at this. There, there's <clears throat> some people I know who are very intuitive, but are not at all articulate with their intuition. And that just makes it a little more challenging. So we have to also put out the energy to try to think about what we're, what we're feeling and try to say it. But understandably, intuition does not always translate into words. So we, there's a certain amount of faith. We just have to work with this. Intuition need not be a means of excluding others from one's thought processes. Moreover, it ought never to be used as such. In other words, don't resent it when people want you to explain yourself. I've seen many people who feel that if anybody asks questions, that somehow, you know, you don't trust me, and that becomes a big issue. You have to be confident enough in your own leadership and confident enough in your own intuition that people can ask you questions and you answer them as best you can. And another thing that you need to be careful about is don't try to make things up just to make it seem better. You just tell people exactly what you do know. Truth has much more power than imagination. So if people start asking you specific questions, the answers to which you don't know, just say, I don't know. What do you think? These are the possibilities. Here are some possibilities. I have, I have a clear sense of it up to that point, but after that I'm not sure. You know, what, how, how, can we, how can we work with this? I mean, this is again where if one makes too much of one's intuitive guidance, then you often start adding layers on, onto that because this is who I am and this is how I have to present myself. Swamiji, who had a lot of experience with a lot of spiritual people over many years, and spiritual leaders and leadership and so on, he said it's just, it's, a, it's just a very great danger. You start playing the game, is how he put it. Start thinking about how I ought to appear so that people believe this is who I am. There was this woman. She was a very good-hearted woman, but she had some silly characteristics in she was a very intuitive lady, and she operated very much from the way the, the feeling would go, and she, she accomplished things. She wasn't hopelessly inept, but she was a little also, her intuition and her imagination got confused a lot, and I remember we were, she lived in another city, and we were visiting with her, and we were in a car together, and she said, she said, you know, every so often I'll, I'll just materialize, so you'll turn and you won't be able to see me, but don't worry, I always come back. <laughs> she said it to us, you know, so genuinely, as if she was just being helpful because she didn't want us to be alarmed. <laughs> and we all, including Swami, just took her at her word and you know, appreciated that now we knew and that we wouldn't worry, we wouldn't call 911 or anything like that. We would just go through it. And I don't know, maybe in her own, maybe to her own perception, she did the material as it became. Swamiji was so lovingly respectful, but he, he saw the human comedy. He didn't mind. And for years afterwards, <laughs> We would just always joke, oh, have I been disappearing again? I'm so sorry. I know it's so inconvenient. Note to self, don't disappear without telling people that I'm leaving. You know, it's just... <laughs> and that's an extreme example. But sometimes people... Be careful. Have a good sense of humor and be careful. Okay, let's see, where are we? <laughs> so... Again, Swami warns us, moreover, intuition ought never to be used to exclude or to have power over others. Now, he's saying we shouldn't do that because it's bad leadership. It's also not very good karma to do that. It's like if we take something, like let's say we have a genuine, genuine inclination toward intuition, 
and a genuine ability to tune in on a higher level. If we take what is really a grace from God and use it for personal power, especially if we use it for personal power over other people, then we are, we are taking a gift, we are misusing it, and the consequences of that will not be good. You know, we'll be led down a primrose path of ever-increasing confusion, depending how egregiously we misuse it. These are divine gifts, and they have real power. And we have to respect that power and use it on the level um, for which it is intended. If we usurp that power and use it on an egoic level for which it is not intended, we set up a dissonance. We set up a dissonance in the universe which will have to be corrected. And the more deeply we ourselves have become invested in that, the more difficult it will be. I wonder, thinking about this, Hitler was a, apparently a very good a tactician in terms of his military efforts, and he was, uh, you know, had victory after victory after victory. And at that time, those who were opposing him were exceedingly concerned about how far his evil influence, his evil power was going to extend. And, and I recall, let me just pull, yes, as I recall, Hitler himself began to think that he was invincible. And because of that egoic, identification with, I mean, because, you know, these people, even if they start using them for evil, they have learned certain secrets of the universe. So they, they have, they're powerful because all power comes from God, and they have certain power that they've developed, but now they're distorting it. And he became, as I, as I heard it explained, he became arrogant. He became convinced of his own infallibility, and that was why the masters of India could infiltrate his, could, could project the thought to him that he could open a second front in Russia. And that was his undoing. And from, apparently, from a military point of view, it was pure folly. And he should have known that. But his, he had, his uh, intuitive perception had become clouded by his egoic attachment to it. So it's also not good for us. I'm using a very big example here. But it's just we, 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 we have to stay on the vibration for, uh, of the gift itself. And if we twist that, then it never works out well. Swami's using leadership principles, but there are many other principles involved. Certainly, however, the safest course generally would be to rely on common sense. And that's what we're going to start talking about tomorrow. So, my friends, I think we'll just end here for today and take up the subject of common sense tomorrow. God bless you.